Uh, buonasera a tutti, inizio un'introduzione in italiano, dopo passiamo all'inglese che sarà un po' come facciamo sempre a Fabrica, la lingua franca no? che unisce uh, la gente come voi che venite da, da vicino e anche tutti questi artisti in residenza che vengono un po' da, da, dal giro per il mondo, grazie di essere venuti prima di tutto, uh, oggi abbiamo, siamo molto felici di, di ricevere uh, uno dei residenti di Fabrica che come, come la storia fa ormai siamo quasi quasi 800 e ci fa molto piacere che, che, che Borut Peterlin sia qui soprattutto anche perché un po' lo sviluppo della sua pratica è molto in sintonia di quello che stiamo parlando questa è eh, chiedo la, la quinta o la sesta lecture del programma che portiamo avanti da, da, da marzo chiamato Archaism e che in certo modo stiamo cercando di esplorare un po' questa, quello che chiamiamo noi il, il ritorno indietro per parlare del futuro, per andare avanti. No? E, eh, il lavoro di, di Borut ci sembrava quasi quasi eh, essenziale no? per raccontare quello, soprattutto per mettere a questa nuova generazione di artisti in residenza di eh, innescare una nuova relazione a queste tecniche del 19, queste tecniche quasi quasi adesso scomparse, però che in qualche modo eh, le nuove generazioni stanno sempre in più eh, interessate aprendo un po' su questo nuovo universo. No? Eh, adesso introduco un po' Borut e dopo passerò la parola a lui, eh, eh, lo farò in, in inglese evidentemente. Eh, Borut Petrlin è un slovenian photographer. Uh, graduated from the reputed uh, FAMU Academy in, in Prague uh, with a postgraduate uh, diploma at the London College of Printing. And in 2000, uh, he arrived to Fabric as a resident where he started working at that time with Oliviero Toscani, who was the director at that time, and developed a myriad of projects while he was here. Some of them he, he will speak and then he will also introduce what happened after Fabric, you know? In, in recent years, Borut Peterlin started to, to participate in workshop at the George Eastman House under the mentorship of Mark Osterman, uh, studying deeply the 19th century photography and especially taking a good emphasis on the wet uh, plate collodion, no? which is also some of the techniques that these three days at Fabrica with the new artists in residence, he's sort of introducing to the, to the new generations of, of, of artists in residence here. And they put together a kind of a, a developing and, 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 and black room around in Fabrica and they're testing all these elements. Uh, back in Slovenia, he's been organizing workshops, uh, also introducing uh, these uh, ancient photography techniques in his atelier in the forest in, in Slovenia, in a fantastic uh, background where people from all over the world uh, come uh, to, to be acquainted to, with these techniques and to learn from, from Borut. And also through the last uh, recent years, he has amassed a great amount of followers through social media and his YouTube channel that I uh, suggest uh, that you check. It's very interesting to follow up his, his practice through, through his way. He's sort of becoming a, a, a persona in the YouTube world of the ancient photographical techniques. And also it's a good way for, for, for the public to get acquainted to these techniques and the stories behind the practice. No? Uh, his work has been exhibited worldwide in venues like the Konik Minolta Gallery in Tokyo in Japan, the K2 Gallery in Izmir in Turkey, the Martin Gropius Bau in, in Berlin, Hose Gallery in London, the Kaunas Photo Festival in Lithuania, the Dolan Museum in Shanghai, China, Photo Fringe Festival in, in Krakow in Poland, uh, RN in Metternach in Luxembourg, the Museum of Contemporary Art in Ljubljana, in Slovenia, and many more that I would allow Borut to introduce in his lecture. Thank you again, Borut, for, for taking the time to come and meet the new generations and also to, to give this lecture. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much for introduction. I must say I feel so honored to be here because this is in Fabrica is... Um, Is a, is a milestone in my life, in my career. Uh, and this uh, talk, I, I shaped um, what happened after Fabrica. When I was 25, 26, 27, 
um, you know, I had this knowledge, this, I was this privilege to work with people, you know, like, uh, we're all, like, like, like yourself, you know, like from all over the world. And, um, and I wanted to have this emphasis on young people being here and, um, and just thinking about where, what life will bring you. So this story here is what life brought me. And it's not only positive, also bad stuff. Life does that. <laughs> so uh, let's go. So yeah, it's my brand. And 2003. 2003 was exactly two years after Fabrica. Um, after Fabrica, I went to London to do my postgraduate studies. 2003, my girlfriend at the time and woman, uh, and my wife, uh, late future wife, um, you know, we were planning to have a child, and of course, 2003 happened, you know. And this is really important, because, you know, when you do your stuff, you do your stuff, your art. But when you have a child, then it's a different league. You have, you have to make a living with this art, you know. So, you know, and, you know, if you have a child, you know, we said, we said okay, we will build a house. <laughs> and, you know, and, um, and how are we going to do that? Well... First, you have to remember that 2003, I was like, I did my BA in Prague, I, did, I worked with, in Fabrica with Oliviero, I did my postgraduate studies, and I had enough of this education. I felt pumped. You know, now all the knowledge that I got, now we will, we will bring it to life. You know, let's make it work in real life. And, you know, because I had, I had, I was working for my child, at first, okay, let's survive, you know. This is like first level, <laughs> let's survive, you know. So I did e everything, everything, and you will see this creativity that I learned here and I got boosted, it's all soaked in my work. CD covers uh, for Le Monde, um, for corporate magazines, more corporate magazines, Ugh, you know, if you want to make a living with a... It's, you know, do a corporate port photography. That's, <laughs> that's how you do it, you know? And, uh, you know, I've done that, you know? <laughs> and I've done it very successfully, you know? And, um, you know, not only that, still life. I mean, Slovenia, it's a, and I did some stuff that was good and some stuff that I hated, you know? I didn't want to have my name right in there, you know? I don't want that people know that I did this junk advertising, you know? And, you know, it's a, it's a fantastic, um, I mean, just imagine, you know, what kind of... Uh, I mean, references for a vegetarian to work for McDonald's. But not only that, you know, not only that I was making images for McDonald's, I even sold my image for McDonald's. So you have to understand this point of view. You know, I, as a young father, wanted to survive. I want to provide to my family. I want to build a house. And, uh, and on top of that, I was a photo editor of a, of a weekly magazine, Ladina. It's a political weekly magazine in Slovenia. And in that stuff, I did many things. Uh, one of the things that I loved, and you can see now, uh, Fabrica, a Colors magazine, Wanted Creativity. You know, I, I've done all these cover pages, um, and, you know, uh, <laughs> swine flu, and, uh, you know... And this is uh, this was a ministry ministry a minister that wanted to have uh, you know made abortus payable, uh, not accessible so much. So you know we did this cover page. My uh, my wife at the time was pregnant for a second time. You know so <laughs> so we did this. Um, and you know you do you remember this? This was a campaign in, in my magazine that would be uh, let's let's. Let's not let's demilitarize Slovenia, you know. This was like kind of like a bolt. And you remember this this picture, right? So it was like literally this is from Croatian soldier, you know, so it was like we are in Slovenia, we are you know neighboring countries, we are sharing the history. So it was making, you know, so it came together our history and you know history from here. So I've done everything. Um, there was like one thing that I really hated was like handshakes. Politicians' handshakes, press conferences. Like, this was like my majority of the work, you know? Like, just like you have to go and do press conference, politician A meet politician B for this adventure. Then politician B meets politician C, and so on and so on. Like, I was doing so many flash for cash photography. I was feeling like, oh my God, I did all this knowledge to do flash for cash photography. You just need autofocus and flash and you have to be there. And it's done, you know? This is like, this is the norm, you know? 
I said, no, 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 I will quit this job if I don't find something creative in this press conferences, um, not to use the juicy word that I want to use. So I, I was really felt frustrated with these press conferences, and I said, if there will be one person in the world that will find an art in these boring press conferences, that would be me. <laughs> you know? So I was looking for what would that be, and I found it. Flower bouquets. So when, when I went to the, to the press conference, I took a picture. Of course, I did a picture for a magazine, you know, but then I took also a picture of a flower bouquet. And, you know, and then, you know, I made a caption. You know, uh, journalistic, um, photojournalistic caption is who, where, when, and, you know, maybe some. So exactly that, you know. But I, <laughs> so I, I captioned it like with George Bush visited, you know. I didn't say, you know, George Bush is on the picture. No, but Guzmania, potted Guzmania plant at the, you know. So basically, I, 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 I take this, I take this um, flash for cash news circ circus very seriously, but I just make a little bit of change, which is I'm just changing the focus. And it was so much uh, revealed. Uh, I felt so much alive, you know, when I was doing that, because it was kind of like, every, every time that I see a politician, was like, you know, I was going for that. And uh, it was really, really uh, fun. Um, presidents, um, you know, historical events, Slovenia is getting a new government, you know, but I'm coming there, I mean, of course, I do my picture, I do my, I do my job, you know, but then I do my picture for myself, you know, so I'm chopping their heads off, you know, <laughs> and just uh, having this stuff, you know, and it, it really, it not only for the, that moment, you know, I, I felt alive because any time where I was, I was looking for for picture, you know, I was not uh, being into a routine, you know, just doing my job, which I can do it like that, you know, with, with blindfolded, but I was alive. I was looking where is some kind of flower, what can, can I do? And it really, 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 really saved my life. <laughs> so, um, yeah, like Ban, Ban Ki-moon, the, the United Nations, like, general secretary, you know, <laughs> I, I was like, those off moments, you know, that really sparked me, and it was kind of like a joke, but it was a serious joke, because if you want to make a joke, you have to keep on doing, you have to be that serious about it, you have to do it for years to make a body of work, and, uh, and you know, and so it was like fantastic, I really enjoyed it, like this is, by the way, president of Slovenia, um, so, so I really, really felt like so. I really like enjoyed it. You know, more boring it was. You know, Miss Slovenia going somewhere. Who cares? You know. But I saw this flower bouquet and I took my picture. You know, and uh, yeah. So, so this was like really, really, um, <laughs> really, really, you know, brought back life to my photography. You know, literally that project saved my career uh, as a. So I could, I could prolong to be like I don't know, maybe eight years. I was, I was in that position. Um, so, so, as you see, it's a, it's a joke, but if it's only one picture, it's, it's a joke, you know, it's like we can share. But this actually was, uh, was um, yeah, this actually, this is a Slovenian president, like formal portraits to me, you know, I did all the former portraits, but then I also focused in the back, you know. <laughs> and uh, when there was like um, a museum of modern art, it was like this big exhibition of Slovenian contemporary art, not only photography, art. The Dutch uh, curator loved this project so much. So basically, on this um, event, uh, I actually I borrowed the same plant, <laughs> and I brought it from Presidential Palace to the uh, to the modern gallery to the gallery, and then it was like this small picture, like literally like that, with this plant, and the whole wall was empty. You know, like he reserved a whole wall for me and also for my uh, for that picture. So so. Um, as you see, uh, some, of, some of the politicians are already dead. And, um, and, and the best thing is when the, uh, I ask a friend uh, to write a, a foreword for it, and he said one thing. In 100 years, nobody will remember the names of those politicians. But in 100 years, everybody will know the name of the flowers. <laughs> so, Flower Power, that's the name of the, pro uh, the, the, the project, Flower Power. So, um, yeah, and you know, it's kind of like, you know, come on, like, you know, 
Where are the, <laughs> come on, Colin, you know, where are the weapons of mass destructions, you know? <laughs> come on, you know, kind of, and you know, I'm framing like this, like Shimon Perez is jumping in my, in my frame. Come on, Shimon, you ruined my picture. So this was kind of like, you know, I was always having this, you know, so you see how art saved my life. Actually, this creativity that was nurtured here saved my life, you know, and, um, you know, even there was off moments because as a photojournalist, you have to wait, 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 wait. You have to be there like, I don't know, half an hour later and then you have to wait that the event finishes and then... So anyway, I was, I was waiting and then I saw, you know, I feel Slovenia, one orchid, and then I was waiting so long that something happened. And uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so, so, so I really enjoyed that, uh, that project. And then the second uh, thing that I, I worked for Mladina, it was like a creative portraits. And, you know, uh, this is something that we did in, in uh, or probably you're doing still. Um, what we had to do in the uh, year 2000, we had to do wanted creativity um, campaigns for colors. Everybody, doesn't matter, are you a musician, are you a photographer, are you industrial designer, one week, no, I think it was like weekly, uh, one you have to, or monthly, I'm not sure. Anyway, so you had to, you had to submit your work. So this is kept with me, you know, so when I had to photograph creative people, like this is a dancer, you know, I wanted to, you know, I just want to show, you know, this, she, she did like a Balkan art uh, festival, you know, so we went to the Balkan food and, and a musician, a comic, um, he did like one, uh, every picture, a writer and so on, a jazz musician, um, this guy wrote a novel, erotic novel, you know, so we made like a romantic date. Uh, <laughs> and uh, yeah, writer. Anyway, so creative people in a creative way. Um, I enjoy, I mean, every picture has its own story, uh, illustrators and so on. But, you know, you understand, wanted creativity, that's exactly that, right? Uh, so, so, <laughs> uh, and... Uh, Oops. By the way, Big River Man, I, I mentioned to some of the students, yeah, yeah, so this is the guy who swam Amazon River. <laughs> so, um, yeah, <laughs> so, I mean, I don't have to talk about these people, you get an idea who they are and what they're doing. By the way, his name is Tomato, Tomato Koshir, so, you know, <laughs> we, we, uh, and so on, and so on, and so on. Yeah, exactly, you know, <laughs> like, just wanted creativity, you know, that's exactly what it is, you know. Uh, photography festival uh, director. Um. <laughs> yeah, it's exactly that, you know. It's, uh, and most of it is done uh, through the lens. So this one is uh, actually, this is actually just from the, from the camera. I put, uh, you know, you have to know your job, you know. You have to know your skill. Like, you know, today people think that they, you have to do your drill. You have to be, and this is... Um, he was an erotic photographer. <laughs> so, uh, and, and you know what? The, the, the formula worked. You know, our house was, you know, I was making a living. I was making really good living in combination with corporate uh, portraits, uh, corporate work, uh, photo editor, being uh, in a magazine, doing those. It worked. You know, I, I, made, uh, I made provide not only the food for my family, but actually we built a house. You know, we built a house. And, uh, and uh, we moved in, and, uh, and then, you know, my daughter, there was like two daughters, then the second daughter was born, and, uh, and uh, it was great, you know, it was really, really great. We moved into the house, and it was really one of the, I would say, six years, seven years of my most intensive life. Like, uh, I enjoyed it so much, you know. But, but it all comes with a price. You know, when you do this for, a, for, for a money, you know, when you know you're doing it for money for the, for, for the house, it's good. It's one thing. But when you move into the house and when you're doing it for a long, excessive time, I mean, then, you know, say, oh, you know, like kind of, um, I didn't felt motivated again. I hated my photography uh, in the sense of a majority. What I've shown you is really like the best. <laughs> but, you know, most of it was like flash for cash and those campaigns and stuff that I really didn't like. Um, and then recession came, and then like recession came and also the money went down, and then I felt kind of like, ah, oh, you know, I don't want to do this, you know, I, I didn't study it so much to this. And then I said, you know what, 
if I would take this, and this is really important, if I would take this work ethic that I have for somebody who is giving me, I don't know, let's say 100 euros, you know, whatever, you know, what gives me like, okay, this is a job, you know, and I do it, you know, like, I do it. Like, if I break my camera, I will borrow your camera. If I break my camera, I will ask, can you give me your picture? I will, you know, pass it on, whatever. You will, I will do anything to deliver because that's what you do as a, as a responsible photographer. You know, if you're a professional, you're a professional. There is no, no excuses. If you say yes, you say yes. It's just like, so, so, so basically what I wanted to say is, um, I said, what if? I would take this work ethic and apply it to my art. You know, what if, what if? And then, um, and then I decided, you know what, I will go, I will, I will do my art again, you know? This is what I decided. This was the, uh, the um, uh, exhibition in, I think it was 2009. It was 2008. In London, Hose Gallery. Um, and then, you know, I went to see Sally Mann. And this is a famous uh, American photographer, and I've seen her work 1995 already. So uh, um, the family, I mean, immediate family, it's their famous, famous uh, pictures that I wanted to see again. And then I saw this. What is this? What is this? What is this on earth, you know? And um, I read and I learned <clears throat> about wet plate collodion process. What is wet plate collodion process? Is basically a process from 1851. 1851. It's a handmade process. And you know, I, I grew up as a as an analog photography. I grew up, you know, in a dark room. You know, so I was oh yes, I want to do that again. And um, and decided yes, I will do. I will take my camera and I will go into the wild. You know, I will do my. Uh, I will. I will. I will gamble. I will gamble because if not, you know. I will do it now. I mean, if not now, when? You know, you will come to one stage in your life when you will say to yourself, if not now, when? You know, and I said, no, no, now is the time. And then I, and then I started to do exhibitions again, um, lots of exhibitions um, in Krakow. I mean, Carlos mentioned few. I, I, I'm very successful with that exhibitions. And you know what? Those creative portraits that I was doing for Mladina, I was doing now in wet plate collodion, you know, and I enjoyed it a lot, you know, like I, I here actually intentionally broke the glass, I scratched the glass, uh, you know, and so on and so on. So I enjoyed that handwork, handwork. Um, uh, this is a dual silence, you know, so I thought it would be so cool to, <laughs> to take a picture of that. <laughs> silence. And um, yeah, and so on. And uh, yeah, I enjoyed this hand creativity, hand. I, I merged my technical knowledge of um, everything that I learned with this. I also won some awards with that. But there was one thing that would really, you know, I still have children. I still have to provide. I still have to make a living, you know. The, the exhibitions, unfortunately, they don't pay the bills. Um, and you know, when I read in this newspaper that, let's say, uh, Alexi Kubal was, uh, was, uh, was one of the most important living artists, painters in Slovenia, and you know, he, in this article, he said he didn't sell a painting for a year and a half or something like that. I said, oh my God, if this guy is representing Slovenia and Venice Biennale, you know, <laughs> and he's not selling anything, you know, how can I survive, you know? But, and then, by the way, um, about the wet plate collodion process, you have to develop the plates on the spot, you know. Uh, it's called wet plate collodion because the plate is sensitive to light when it's wet. So this is my darkroom tent. So I bring everything on the field. So the darkroom tent, the water, the chemistry, everything, everything. And, uh, you know, when I was developing this and I said, you know what, oh, I have to buy again silver trade. And I was buying it from eBay, and I said, you know what, what if I would sell something on eBay, you know? But the thing is, on eBay, and I said, okay, I will sell this print. But, you know, the thing is, if you are, if you are starting to sell an art, especially art, you know, <laughs> on eBay, which nobody does, you know, I said, no, 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 I will, you know, I will make, I will make an, a, a, a story about it, you know, this is, this is the key thing. You're not selling a photograph, you're not selling a car, you're not selling, uh, I don't know what, you know, you're not, whatever you do in your life, you're not selling this, you're selling a story. So 
I, I just have, I have to make a story out of it. So I said, okay. So I started, uh, I started an auction from 0 0.99. <laughs> like 0 0.99, you know, will it sell for $5 or will it sell for $3, whatever? Well, you know, in the end it sells for 111, you know. This is important that people were bidding, you know, 26 bids. So like people were bidding, you know. And uh, so I said, it was a fantastic marketing tool because who is this crazy guy, you know, who's selling his art, like handmade art on eBay from 0 0.99, you know? It was kind of like a good joke, you know? But it didn't, it didn't, didn't stay as a joke, you know? Because let's say this print and this print also was 0 0.99. And, you know, I sold one for uh, 20, uh, 350 and the other one for 400. And this was like, I don't know, like 700, or well, yeah, almost uh, 700. <clears throat> $700, like, like that, you know? <laughs> like, so that was really good. Um, and then <clears throat> I decided that I have enough of these eBay auctions and I went on my, on my uh, just make a store. And actually I'm, I'm, I'm selling well from, from that store. Um, and even now, actually not, now even in, uh, now even galleries, just, just um, hmm, what? 10 days ago, there was like art photo, uh, art photo uh, in London and they sold three of my prints. Uh, each of them were more than 800 euros. So that's great. So, you know, but that's how it started. You have to remember one thing. You know, don't be, don't be, uh, you have to have a vision. You have to believe in yourself and just, just, you know, just put everything in, like just everything in. And, you know, um, and it, it, it works. I will come up uh, later what, what I've done more crazy stuff. Um, then, you know, I started to make books. You know, <clears throat> on video, yeah, that's one, one thing, you know, um, one thing that it's very important to explain. Um, Slovenia is a very small country, two million residents, and um, <laughs> the worst place to make an art career, <laughs> to sell art, is like really, literally impossible. Um, uh, so I said to myself, okay, if I'm doing this, I have to... If I really want to be serious, I have three options. One, quit. <laughs> Second, move to some, some, I don't know, some big place, uh, some different country, like where it's millions, or metropolis of Europe. Or, or, or what if I would become so good that people will come to, to my place, you know, to my small town. And, uh, and that's why I started YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, all that stuff, you know. I started with, again, coming back, I have to provide to my family, you know. I have to take this work ethic of a being a professional photographer and do, it, do my work, do my hard, you know, do, not be afraid of hard work. I never was afraid of hard work, I never am. So, I, I, this book, um, you know, all these pictures, I was vlogging. I think the, this is actually, it happened, uh, this book I was creating a few years, and I was creating, like each, each picture, I, I made a video how it's creating. Um, there is more about this book, there's more about this book, and this is, you know, when life actually turns around, when you think you figure everything out, flips around, you know, and then, and this is, with my wife, uh, we were together for 21 years, 21 years, so from my age of 20 to my age of 41, 21 years. And, but then, you know, we separated. Um, and uh, and these pictures, these pictures were literally, I was inviting my daughters, um, you know, to, to spend time with. It was like my photography, my art became a bridge to my fatherhood, you know, to my, to my uh, once I was, they were participating in, in this creative port process. Um, secondly, I was selling my work, and uh, and they enjoyed that, you know, to be in the video and so on, and uh, and you know I and you know I made a book, and you know you have to remember one thing: if there are like a few thousand, uh, one one thing I said to to myself, you know, if you do one thing in your life that that you think it's it's great, like it's the best thing in the life, you know, doesn't matter what it is. Are you collecting stamps? Are you in shoes or are you in art? Doesn't matter what. If you truly believe this is, if you truly believe in your passion, 
then I guarantee you there are a few millions of people around the world who would think this is the best thing in the world. It doesn't matter what. Is, are, you, are you collecting uh, paper cups? You will find a few million people that are into pa uh, uh, paper cups. You know, whatever you, you think, but you have to really believe that. You know, you have to really say, you know, I'm going to reach those people, and that's what I did. You know, I, was, um, I made this book, and with this book, I don't know, I... I don't remember exactly how much because I didn't calculate, but I, it was like the profit was more than 10,000 euros, you know? If I would give it to, uh, uh, um, um, to the book publisher, you know, maybe I would get 1,000 or 2,000, you know? But, but this is because I, was, I really believed in it and, you know, I was just selling through bordpetrlin.com. There was like no library had any, any, any of my book. But because people were following me, that became my, 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 my money, you know? Like, and, you know, and from that money, also, you know, my, my kids benefited. So, by the way, the book is on sale. <laughs> yeah, I really enjoyed it. In, in this book is also one thing I discovered. It was not only about portraits and, you know, spending time with kids, but also I thought about a photograph as an abstract painting. Um, how, let's say, this picture is if, I, if you put it together with uh, some other picture, how is that affecting as a... As a, as a so I have several, several like, I think it in the in behind, let's say, when I put those two pictures together, how they work together, you know? And then, and then I thought, yeah, yeah, it works. Because, because landscape photography, which is, I love, uh, became, became uh, like kind of like a vehicle, a vehicle for feelings, for feelings. So, you have to find your own language. You know, this was my language, and uh, it, it worked, and I really enjoyed it. And um, yeah, and some of the images are very playful, but some of them are very dark. Like this one is, whew, you know, like kind of drowning. This was kind of, and but again, like playful, you know. So like you know, kids leaving. <laughs> you know, by the way, she's now 16, and uh, the oldest one is uh, she's now 19. <laughs> they really left the. the, the um, I I um, I went to Rochester. I really learned my craft. You know, I really learned my craft. This picture is made of from egg white, from egg white, from albumen. So just as they were doing in 19, 1855, so I learned all the process, you know. Uh, I, I have this lens from 1860s, something like that, old lenses, every, you know. And um, yeah, and as I said, this picture in a book place has its own uh, place. I had a lot of uh, exhibitions with that project too. And then was like another project which was totally different, another book. A light mood. Light mood is totally different. Uh, this was literally a book. The other book, uh, the books I usually work years on it. But this one was just street photography. I don't know if you know what street photography means, but basically you're just walking down the street and then you see something and then you try from this chaos that it is around, you try to make a visual poetry. That's what it is. There is no truth, there's no higher truth than except the, the love for light, dark shadows, uh, love for straight lines, curves, perspective, form. It's just a dance. It's just like, you know, you would listen to a music. There is nothing that I, can, that I want to tell you about. It's, there is no truth. It's just light mood, like light mood. It's just like light mood. You enjoy yourself. And this was shot in, uh, in Spain when uh, it was like this light, you know, like I was like, I came from Slovenia, it was like so dark, it was like so rainy, and then it was like this beautiful light, you know. And every picture I thought, oh, it's an it's a, it's abstract painting, you know, forms, tak, 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 you know, and uh, all the lines has to be straight, and, you know, and I just enjoyed it so much, you know, I just enjoyed it being, as a, again, again, coming back to that uh, from Flower Power Project, you know, being alive, because this is like, you know, because you never know when the picture is waiting for you. It's, you don't have an appointment at three o'clock to be there and photograph something. No, it could be any time, you know. So, so, so basically, this was, all the book happened in one week. And uh, one week just, and, and uh, well, like, we were, we were at the, uh, uh, the lunch, you know, and I saw the, that guy with the, with the bird cage, and I looked around and saw this barrel. And then I run, 
Like he was right there and he was coming there. And I saw this barrel and I just frame it in a way that he comes in, into the frame, you know, because I saw this similarity of two forms, you know. So this is, this is, uh, this is how I, I, I play around and, you know, I'm just enjoying myself and, and uh, you know, reflections. I just, just love for photography. So, you know, if you saw before, like those advertising campaign, which drain me, drain me, you know, like I, I, I was saying, ah, oh, you know, really drain me. I didn't want to see any, any photography. This is totally opposite. It's just a pure love for being there, you know, just seeing things. Just, just you know, like doof, 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 you know, just, yeah, shadows, light, you know, forms, light, you know, just, like, look at this one. This is why one of my favorite. It's like... And again, you know, you have to think if as, a, as, as a photographer, if you, if you think one thing is interesting, like a bird cage or this, la uh, this uh, child standing there, don't go for the child standing there. Go, go, put it somewhere around, you know, because it's just a, style, a child on the street on the end of the day, you know. So, you know, actually I crossed the street just to have uh, just to have a foreplane and, and back plane, you know, not to be too simple. It may, it, so, yeah, and then moments, you know, moments. And then you have this, you know, relationship that lasts for that amount of time, you know. But in your mind, you just, you, it, it, it's, it's there already, you know, just it, things is coming together, you know. Things is coming together. You feel this a million times doesn't happen, you know. A million times doesn't happen. But, you know, you have to feel this energy and then it happens. And um, so... Um, I did my wet plate collodion uh, process for many. Um, of course, this was this was one of the one of my really beautiful uh, commissions. This is a um, costumographer. This guy um, is uh, makes theater costumes and this. So this is all done in in the camera. No Photoshop here. This is glass plate. Again, I did my vlog about it. You know, I recorded. So he asked me. You know, I have this. Costumes from the from the from the from the theater shows, and I want you to photograph them in a wet plate. In a but wet plate is black and white, you know, and color is is crucial. So I, I you know I said okay, I have it has to be color and it has to be black and white. <laughs> How to put those two together? So what I've done is um, I took a wet plate. And then I took my digital camera and I took a picture with digital camera. And then when I came home, I scanned and then I sampled the colors, the true colors of the materials, because it's really important. This is not just coloring. Because, you know, if you see here, like this blue is totally different than this blue. You cannot fake that. You cannot fake that. You have to, you have to sample it. So, so I did, like, I sampled it and, you know, it came out beautiful, beautiful combination of, uh, again, my, my Photoshop knowledge at the end of the day and my 19th century knowledge. <coughs> uh, <coughs> so, um, <coughs> this was really great. And then, you know, then um, I mentioned my divorce. You know, my art is always my, my, um, my savior, my beaker, my, my light. I always... I always uh, think about my light, my 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 art is something that uh, saves me and like pulls me pulls me through. This is, um, you know, in 2000, what 19? It was uh, probably one of well second worst year of my life. Uh, the worst one was when I burned myself with gasoline, almost died <laughs> when I was 11 years. So it was really horrible. What happened that year is. Um, after my divorce, that was like in August 2016, um, I said, you know what, I'm 41 years old, I'm a really like family means world to me. You know, I'm young enough to start my new family. And, uh, and I did, and I did, I did uh, found a, a, a woman that was like, also wanted to have the same family and blah, blah, blah. And we decided to have a family and um, and uh, after, what, two years later, or, yeah, two years later, she, she got pregnant. But how should I say that? Um, love lasted till she got pregnant. <laughs> and then, you know, I felt really, 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 really 
the, on the virtue of depression, like really. But again, I said, you know what? And then COVID happened, you know? That was like 2020. In the beginning of 2020, in January, I realized it's, 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 it's utterly, it's gone, you know, like this, like all hope was gone. And in, in, um, uh, her parents were from Sydney, so in January 2020, she left with our son to Sydney, and then COVID happened. So I have, uh, uh, I have not seen my son for two and a half years, so from January 2020 to June 2022. So that was for me like, uh, you know, like I screw up my life, you know, like this is like, like I really lost all my 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 will to live, like just, um, and uh, and I. But you know, I I'm really disciplined guy. I really disciplined guy. I I don't drink. I don't smoke. I never tried any drugs. Like I'm really really. I'm an artist, but I'm kind of like a soldier in one way. You know, like I really don't don't take. Uh, don't take, you know, I, mean, I feel what I feel, but I don't give in, you know, I don't give in, I, I'm, I'm a fighter, I, I will keep on. So what I did, you know, was 2020, you know, it was COVID, we were closed, you know. So I said, you know what, what if I just go to the forest and just be there? I have this Land Rover from uh, 50 years old, and I went to the forest and uh, I took my big camera with me, this really huge camera, really huge camera, and I started my project, uh, A New Earth. Uh, yeah, I was, again, I was doing vlogs, you know, how I'm living in the forest. I mean, I, I went for a campaign, you know, like five days at a time. Uh, it's really deep, deep in the forest, and uh, I was meeting bears like many times, twice. It was like really close. It was like growling at me. Oh. That's how it is, you know, that's how it is if you're a wilderness. I'm not afraid of bears, you know, I have this really good dog that she takes care of. <laughs> she really, I really trust her, you know, I really have no problems. I know when bear is around, but the bear will not come. So anyway, um, I started this project, uh, uh, A New Earth, and... Um, and you know, when you're alone in a forest, uh, it's something... It's something amazing, you know, like if you are alone, 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 you know, you have to face your fears and there's no obstructions, you know, there's no obstructions, there is no, no auditorium, I cannot talk to anybody, you know, I cannot say, you know, and then slowly when you're persisting, this is very important, persisting in this, this will be art, this will be, you know, I will create art, you know, this is how it's going to be. And then, you know, slowly, slowly this um, uh, voice in our head comes down and then slowly you see, you see uh, images. And um, as I said, I, I did my vlogs and I created this, this, um, this book. And this book, I want to read two poems. And um, I, yeah, I started to write poems. I never wrote any poems before, any. Uh, but, you know, when you are really into this what should I say, this concentration, this flow, this, this state, asking yourself who you are, why you're here, and, you know, these big, big questions, then, you know, things are happening, and things are happening. Just you have to be very, very sober, you have to be very persistent, and you have to um, be very quiet, because all this um, inspiration... It's a very, 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 very gentle and tiny voice. It's not like, you know, I don't know. I don't know. Like people are, I mean, I know friends. I have friends who are taking psychedelic drugs for, to get over certain things. Yeah, well, great. You know, that's, that's their life. I'm not judging anybody, you know. Whatever works for you, works for you. But for me, no way. Like for me, I just have to be persistent, be quiet, and things will come. And, and this is, and this is exa again, this conviction. It comes from within. It's nothing that I, I don't doubt. If, if the answer doesn't come, it doesn't come today. Just be persistent, be present. And this presence in the forest is so, so crucial because, you know, I am really deep in the forest. This is like really deep. And if I hurt myself, if I break my arm, if I break my back, that's it. You know, I'm climbing on the top of the landy, you know, putting stuff, da-da-da. 
if I break my back, if I fall, that's it. You know, I, uh, my phone is uh, in a dashboard, you know, <laughs> off, you know. Uh, and who, will, who will know where I am? You know, maybe the, in, the, in this, like, a year later, Forrester will find me, or hunters. Anyway, here is, uh, here is the, uh, I will read two books, I mean, two poems. There are, like, 15 of them inside. One is uh, the beginning of this project, and uh, the last one is the end. So, <clears throat> um, the first one, let me just take some little bit of a sip. The first, one, the first one is, would you hold it against me? Would you hold it against me if I died? Now, without the goodbye, just, just like that, in passing, I was everything, now nothing. Absolutely nothing. What would you say about all the work not finished, the promises not kept, the love unspoken, the children not nourished? Who will do all this in my place? And most of all, why? For what? Whose, whose cross not carried to term did I bear on my shoulders? And whom should I give it to? Would you hold it against me if I died? No. Would you hold it against me if now, unannounced, unplanned, without words, just like that, I came alive? I broke all the promises, all the expectations, tore down all the projects like house, uh, like house of cards, burned all money orders, gave away all the cash, put down the cross, and I simply disappeared. As if I have never existed at all. Would you hold it against me if I didn't die, but only then truly came alive, yet still disappeared? Would you hold it against me if you knew that I was finally happy? Would you? Would you look for me? Why? For what? Would you want me to return, or would you too want completely unnoticed, sometime to disappear. You know, yeah, this is how I felt. You know, like, I, 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 I felt really horrible, but at the same time, I felt really liberated. And I thought, like, why I'm doing this, what I do, you know, why? And, uh, and um, as I said, there are, like, a um, whole book about that. And the last one is literally the end, you know, the end, the end of my project. It says, King, King. <laughs> King without a kingdom, without subjects, without a court. King without a crown, without a sword, without a scepter. A king in service of others bases his kingdom upright, proud, and courageous, for he knows he's king. And, and he bows low to everyone, for he knows he has met his equal, the same as him. You know, when you go deep inside yourself and, we, and you, stop, you stop comparing to others, because now, you know, we, when you see like self-confidence, usually that means, you know, I, I am, I'm better than the other. <laughs> you know, it could be worse. It could be worse. But, you know, I, actually I want to be there, so I will fight for, to get there, you know. You, we always compare to each other. That's how we are programmed. That's, who, that's how our society works. But if you go really deep, you know, really, really deep, then you understand you are a king or a queen, uh, and then you, uh, you understand that your self-worth, it has nothing to do with other people. It has nothing to do with other people. And, um, and that's why I say, a king in service of others, but still knows he's a king, you know. I, I, you know and this is, this is the, the last, the last uh, poem. Um, and um, this is actually how, you know, my, my spiritual walk that I took in the middle of the forest. <clears throat> I will just show you a couple of images from that. This is uh, free spirit. Free spirit, um, again, guys, if you are into art, get inspiration. Get, soak in other people's work. Um, let's say this, I went to the um, Martin Gropius Bau in Berlin. I always go there for a visit. Uh, when I'm there, I always visit. I always see all the exhibitions because it's like a sacred place. It's one of the best places in Europe. 
So there was Ana Mendieta. I never heard about her. Ana Mendieta, she's a Cuban artist, um, and um, she was one of the first uh, feminists, one of the first uh, landscape artists. And the thing that really made a click in my mind was this. She was... Uh, um, um, she enjoyed the, the art of Incas and uh, Mayas. So what she did, she, she, she started to do the sculptures and the art that Inca and Mayas were doing. But when she made them, they look fake. They look fake like papyrus from Egypt, you know? <laughs> it looks the same, but it's fake, you know? Like you, it, it's in the, it says, it screams fake, you know? So she didn't like that, and she had said, but you know what, Maya and Incas, they were not using this as an art, as an ornament. They, they, they use it for rituals. So she started to perform rituals uh, in nature. And, you know, and then I realized, oh my God, what if I wouldn't just photograph trees or landscape photography, but I would perform rituals. I would perform rituals. I, 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 I mentioned where, where, I'm, where I came from, from really like a, like a deep, deep pain. And I said, no, no, I will make rituals of healing, you know? And uh, not only about, but I said, but, but this should not be a story about me. This should be universal. And you know, if you're, we're talking universal, like first of all, like I was alone, you know, it was COVID time. But even if it would not be COVID time, I think still I would go, I would be alone, you know, that was the point of it, you know. In the beginning, I wanted to do this project together with, with women that I, you know, I want to spend my life with, but she was gone and that's how it is, you know, we have to accept that. So I was alone there, you know, so I, I um, by the way, this, uh, she, uh, Anna Mendieta, she used this, um, um, posture as from Incas and Mayas, and uh, um, so, uh, so, so I, I took that as a homage to her, free spirit, that, that's, that's what it was. So, you know, I, um, this is one of my second picture that I've made in a forest, you know, I, of course, I had like my son, my son was like my, my core, uh, my core, um, my core thinking, like this was always like inside me, I came up with my relationship with my son, and um, <clears throat> I made this picture, I call it father and son, you know? And who is father, who is son, you know? And then I realized, you know, I'm not talking about myself. I'm talking about humanity. Because, you know, on the end of the day, you know, we are humans, what are our relations to nature? Are we gonna destroy it? Are we gonna, our, our, um, and, and so on. So, you know, and then, you know, in um, 2020, we were all, we were all like bound to computers and uh, I, I started, I mean, you know, I opened up for photographers and I don't know, I wasn't, <laughs> I wasn't inspired by other photographers, but I was inspired by painters. Botticelli, Andrew Wyeth, this was actually Andrew Wyeth, uh, if you know Andrew Wyeth uh, painting um, Christina's world, they're like this paraplegic uh, woman is pulling herself through the field and you know I took this body posture and I made this and actually <clears throat> it's very and um, actually I will write uh, I will read, read this poem because it's very short and um, and you know Andrew Wyeth and is, is, you know and remember this is exactly what I said it's it's kind of um, inspiration you know you have to get inspired by other people and you know just consume okay here it is <clears throat> Nothing here, <clears throat> nothing here and that there. I know everything. I already know and recognize everything. <clears throat> <clears throat> Sorry. Mm. I know everything. I already know and recognize everything. No need to retrace steps. Nothing lies under the endlessly upturned stones. But that nothing is now here, while that there snarls, snar snarls from the dark and launches itself. You know, we are, we are trapped in these patterns that are not good for us. Everybody, you know, we know certain patterns in our life, they're not good for us. And we know what to do to get rid of them. But these patterns are ours, you know. This is who we are. This is who we are. And, um, uh, and we don't want to give in, you know, we don't want to leave it, you know, because that there, that there is, is black, 
It's unfamiliar. It's, 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 it's something that we don't know if we can handle. We don't know if we can handle. It's a mystery. And uh, do we want to take a risk? Mm. You know, do we want to take a risk to be better? Or do we want to deal with our shit, I'm sorry, language? We will deal with this pattern because, because we are dealing whole our lives and we know how to deal with it. Yeah, it's, 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 it's pulling us back, but we know how to deal with it. So it, it, this is what I'm talking about, you know, when you're afraid to make a change in your life. So, so um, in Christina, so basically, if you remember, I took, I took one visual element of, of Andrew Wyeth and I took it, it, took it in myself and... And uh, I, I came up with new art. This is one of my favorite images. It's um, it's a love story, and it's basically a very simple image. And it uh, it's a kind of love story between lines and curves, between um, light and black, between a man and a, and a tree. It's very simple, very clean image, but. I love it, you know, it's so simple and it's a love story, you know, it's kind of... Uh, I mentioned Botticelli. <clears throat> I went to the virgin forest and, uh, you know, and <laughs> yeah, I did like Birth of a Venus, <laughs> you know, kind of a allegory. Um, lovers. This is my first, first image that I've made. <clears throat> a sacrifice, a sacrifice, you know. Because if you if you if you are <clears throat> if you will get, everybody will get. Everybody did get and will get in the future. Sometimes life is just hits us hard, and it's just you cannot stay the same. Whatever it is, financial, personal, um, in a family or in a whatever, it hits you, and you cannot stay the same. You have to. You will either sink or you will climb above. Only two options. And this, I made the first image a sacrifice. I made the first image a sacrifice because I said, okay, I'm sacrificing here. I know we, we are talking about human. I'm making rituals. I'm talking about human, kind, nature, sacrifice. And I thought, first I made an image that was focused on my body. Uh, but then, uh, then by, by coincidence, the focus dropped and it looks so much better. Not, not this image, I repeat it, because this image, I think I was working three days on it because it was my first image. So the workflow with this huge camera is very, very difficult. Um, so, and I love this because we have these small branches that are like kind of like a, like a witness of the, this sacrifice. And uh, again, all this is on YouTube, you know, how I'm making these pictures and how I'm talking about it, because this is one thing that I promised to myself. Zero stress. Zero stress. In my vlog, the first day, I, 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 it's, like, it's literally like three hours of preparation to start photograph. When I, when I, when I prepare everything, the darkroom, the lens, the, the camera, the, all my chemistry on the right spot, da 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 da, -da. I climb on the roof, I took my glass plates, and all the glass plates were shattered. Not a single glass plate survived the drive, you know, through the forest. I said, okay, and I said in my vlog, this I promised myself zero stress, this is zero stress. <laughs> I said, okay, so what do I have to do? Pack things, go back home, uh, rebuild, because I, I, I designed my transport boxes. Before I went to photography, I did, my, I, I did carpentry school. <laughs> so I, I know something about carpentry, so you know, I, I redesigned my, my, my box. I came back um, next day, or a day, day later, and I did this image. So, um, and you know, um, and, uh, a new earth, <clears throat> Actually, a reference is uh, uh, Eckhart Tolle's book, A New Earth, which talks about, um, about uh, human condition, you know, that we have to change our consciousness, otherwise we will just, we're just gone, our civilization will gone, you know. Uh, the earth will still be here, <laughs> the nature will survive, but we as a civilization we will be gone. And um, 
and uh, his book is influenced by the Bible, so you know it has this religious connotation. And uh, I personally, I'm not a religious person. I, I, I find myself that I'm spiritual, but not religious. Um, and this is actually, you know, uh, but you know, the Bible it was like it's, it's a fantastic, you know, reference. It's a, it's a thousand year, few thousand years old stories inside, you know. So um, this is a story about um, Samson, and, Samson and Delilah. <clears throat> this half god that was be betrayed by a woman, <clears throat> I felt like that, and uh, you know I did this kind of like a crisis like uh, but you know Samson pushes away the columns and everything they all die <laughs> so it 's kind of like a um, or or ego uh, ego you know um, ego is the one that's like making problem problems you know burning ego, burning ego. Um, so, you know, just remember where the pain comes from, you know, it's not from the, um, from the being, it's not from the feeling that you're a king and you're worthy and that, you know, you're, you're um, so, you know, I kind of like, yeah, I kind of like uh, gave myself in, I really enjoyed, I enjoyed working and uh, this is the, the, the composition, it's always talking a reference to the personality, to the ego, how I'm, you know, uh, letting go, and letting, letting go. This is one of my last pictures in the book. I made many pictures, but in the presentation I just made a few. Um, like, uh, like that I'm gone. <laughs> just like a handprint, or uh, I, I left. Uh, um, I left, you know, I left a mark. I left something. Um, this exhibition um, was exhibited really... I really re received a lot of, a lot of, it was like healing. It was literally healing. It was, um, I will not go into details, technical details, but this is, but believe me, this is, the, the, you saw the big camera, and this is 19th century photography in the, with the big plates. I have to develop in the forest. People who are seeing this on YouTube, they couldn't believe that I'm doing this while I'm doing it in the middle of forest, you know, because usually people do it in, in, the, in the studio. But I'm bringing everything in the forest, huge, ultra-large format camera. And I'm staying there in a, uh, for weeks. Um, so I had this exhibition, um, and on the, on the back there was this um, video. Um, <laughs> you know, I really, I don't know, like museum really picked up uh, my... my my story, my, my, my exhibition, I really, really grew, you know, really grew. I had even billboards around my town. It was just like fantastic, you know. Um, and, you know, my son, you know, my son came back, you know. My son came back in, uh, yeah, less than a year ago. We met and uh, I took him to the exhibition and, uh, and a really, really long time. I couldn't even speak about this image without crying. And, you know, I came there and I said, listen, this is father and son, you know, who is father, who is son, you know? And he points to this, you know, this, yeah, your father, you know? <laughs> kind of like, you know, we really built a, a really strong, strong uh, relationship and I'm telling him, you know, about, you know, this relationship, the tree and, you know, I said, you know, you, you were my tree, you know, your tree, you're strong and you will grow and, and so on. So, <clears throat> and uh, yeah, and he's, we, we build really amazing, uh, amazing, amazing relationship. And then in the museum, this is the second exhibition I had of this work. In the museum, I had, um, I, I, I brought by hand these stones from the forest, from the spot that I took pictures. Um, I don't think, <laughs> I, I don't even didn't include it in the, in the, in the in the book, but is um, right here. I mean, this is literally these stones. <laughs> these are literally these stones that I, I picked. Uh, these stones and I brought I brought them into the gallery, you know, uh, by hand. Like each stone, I moved three times <laughs> to bring it there. And you know, for me, it was like a very important symbol because we are talking about heaviness. We are talking about stone. We're talking about our bodies, you know, we are talking about we are dust, we are from, from dust and we are dust is from stone. So we are this heaviness, you know, and then I put on top uh, a light, like a light that's coming down and transcending everything, you know, I, I made this connection between this heaviness and this lightness and also this, these two pictures, one is uh, heavy and the other one is light. You know, you can guess which one is heavy, which one is light. Um, because, because, yeah. So, um, 
And you know, I just came from Portugal. This actually was, was um, by the way, I, I, this I also exhibit in Prague uh, a month ago, 17th of, of uh, no, yeah, 17th of April, I had an exhibition of this picture in Prague. Unfortunately, because of time constraints, I, I didn't include it inside, but I did just before our presentations. I, I took pictures from, uh, listen, literally, this is literally taken um, on Thursday, <laughs> on Thursday, last Thursday. Uh, so in Portugal, in Montserrat, um, I, I exhibited in a church. In a church, you know, like it was like gallery was a church. It was like so I felt, you know, because in church you have this Christ's walk, you know, um, because we all do. I mean, it's a metaphor, you know, you have, you have each of us. Life is suffering, you know, that's how it is. We they, they want it or not, you know, that's how it is. And, you know, like, I don't know how many years ago, 50 years ago, this was, the walls were, were with Christ uh, image, I mean, image, I mean, paintings of his suffering. And here is my, my walk, like my spiritual walk. And felt, I felt so good. And there in the middle of, the, of this gallery, in the middle of this church, I felt that, you know, this project concluded, you know, that one big, 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 big chapter of my life has finished and finished the best way possible. Um, um, that my, my, and you know, and you know, when the opening, uh, I was like, three o'clock, um, Wednesday, three o'clock. You know, I never had exhibition opening at three o'clock p.m. <laughs> I said, who will come, you know, and Montserrat, it's not Lisbon, it's like two hours drive from Lisbon all the way on the border with Spain. So I said, oh, I hope somebody will show up. And actually people came from Lisbon and uh, one guy came from 500 kilometers from north of Portugal to, to the exhibition, you know, because why? Because of my videos and my, because I was sharing these stories uh, and they were like following me for years and literally like a decade probably, you know, um, how actually um, I'm, you know, I'm growing up as a, as a, as a human being and, uh, and, um, yeah, and uh, it felt really good. <laughs> I don't want to see myself. So anyway, um, um, uh, to conclude, um, you know, I, to conclude, I, um, the church is, I mean, the, my uh, forest, I still have this really deep relationship with church, <laughs> with church, with forest. Um, and uh, I feel really peaceful there. I, I bought even a, a cabin. This is cabin I bought in year 2000, no, 2020. You know, when was the recession? When was the COVID? This uh, by serendipity, which I will, I will, maybe I will describe later in person, but literally like this guy came and said, almost, you know, like um, kind of, yeah, you know, you will pay me whenever you can. You know, <laughs> it's kind of like uh, this is the price, and uh, you will pay whatever, wherever you can. It's yours. You know, kind of. I say, okay. You know, kind of like literally, the, this cabin kind of picked me. You know, uh, because I didn't have money to buy it, but kind of like, uh, but you know, after I said, okay, I will buy it, and then you know, guess what? You know, when you decide that you will buy something, that you will do something in your life, guess what? Life helps you, and I, I did, I did, I did help me, and I, I, it's, it's uh, now it's mine, and it's not re ready to invite friends, but soon, mm, next year this time it will be. Uh, for now, it's okay for me and my uh, my family, and. Uh, yeah, and you know, I'm doing a lot of workshops uh, in the forest. I'm promoting this, this um, I don't know, way of life. But not, not the way of life. It's being present, you know, being, because I'm saying always, you know, like if you can be peaceful in the forest, why you cannot be in the middle of the f city? Because, you know, you just have to go, go deep inside you. And uh, yeah, and I'm having this, and I'm really, 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 Privilege that people from all over the world are coming to my small, small, small town of 4,000 residents. Uh, and then we are going to the forest and we do our, this kind of photography. Um, in January, somebody came from South Africa. <laughs> And uh, in March, somebody came from Sao Paulo, <laughs> you know. A uh, guy from Singapore came twice, you know. <laughs> it's kind of like, I, I really feel, I feel uh, uh, blessed that, um, that, you know, this uh, human condition that, um, 
that I recognize not only in myself but in general. You know, it's actually true. You know, it's actually true. And uh, and uh, you know, I I enjoy you know hosting people and just going into the forest and just being watching <laughs> fire. <laughs> And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm having a lot of that. Um, this was still a slide from 2020 when we had to do the COVID thing. And uh, yeah, I was, I was selling my work. 2020 was not financially, it was a good year for me because you know, I, was, I was really active in my art and uh, people were buying my books, my prints. And uh, yeah, and from, even from Google, <laughs> paid me something from the view. So... Um, so this is what I want to say, you know. I just want to conclude. Um, I'm, uh, if you understand, if you want to uh, understand uh, where I came from, I came from this uh, sacred place of Fabrica, uh, where I got this creativity, like uh, from from you know, from the best place in the world. And uh, but I just want to say that this creativity. Uh, nurture that. It's not, it's not something that you were born with and it's not something that will stay with you. It's just like, you know, you just have to practice, believe in it and fight for it. And as I said, I'm, um, I'm supporting my family and I'm, um, I don't know, I guess I could say that I'm a change that I want to have in my life, uh, in the world. I am the, the change that I want to see in my world. So thank you here, everybody, for coming in. Uh, <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, brother.